Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another exciting game of girls high school varsity baseball softball here on CPHS 6. I'm Carl Staffhorse. Tonight's matchup, the Port Huron High Big Reds versus the visiting Marysville Vikings. This one just underway now. Kate's up first for the Big Reds. Faces Davis on the mound for the Vikings. So this is the second game of the doubleheader. The Big Reds took the first one five to four. And a drag bunt check swing there, and that one fouled off. One misses outside. So Kate's working the count. And that one dragged Bunt and had to jump to get out of the way of it. Misses outside, ball four. So they start off with a leadoff walk. So good job working the count for Brianna Cates. Okay, bring up Lindsay Kaibas. That one taken for a strike. The third baseman, Bucko, once again playing really far in. That one just fair on the first baseline and rounding third. And she will stay put on third is Kate's as Kaibos reaches. So now runners at the corners, no out. That one taken for a strike, and off on the play is Kaibos to steal second. So now the Big Reds with runners at second and third. With no outs here, top of the first inning. Ground ball hit the short. It should score a run, and it does. Runner will advance to third as one run comes in. So good job putting the ball in play. By Tuffin. I'll bring up Kester. So the Big Reds are up one nothing. This is outside. So Kester, runner on third. Ground ball. We'll score another run. So another, another sacrifice infield hit. And now the Big Reds up on the board, two to zero. So nice job just putting one in play. I'm gonna bring up Kerry Gamble. Now with the bases empty. We have a soft uh, southpaw on the mound for the Vikings. Not something you see all the time. The 
Again, that is Davis on the mound. That one misses. Gamble. So top of the first inning, but even though we are at Port Huron High School, this is a double header, so the Vikings are actually the home team in this one. They will get last at bats. And strike three looking, so that does it to, for the top of the first inning. Big Red's up 2-0. We'll be back with the bottom of the first in just a moment here on CPHS 6. All right, and we're back with the uh, bottom of the first inning. Again, tonight's game, Port Huron High Big Reds against the Marysville Vikings. Vikings are the home team, even though we are at Port Huron High School. And on the mound for the Big Reds, Kerry Gamble. She's paced with Taylor Volpe. So the Big Reds had a great start to the first inning. Putting two runs on the board. This one's going to be popped up in the infield. Sunny day, but able to get underneath it and make the play. So one down. And that'll bring in Morgan Bucko, third baseman for the Vikings. That one misses inside, ball one. Pitch from Gamble, misses high. And this being a double header, not sure how much time the pitchers get to really warm up. I don't believe Gamble was in the lineup for the last game. But with most of your team playing, I'm not sure how much time you have even to warm up on the sidelines. Try to get him out here pretty quick for game number two. That one fouled back. That one misses for a ball. Make that three and two. So Gamble with the payoff pitch. Hit hard and will get through to second. Would have been a tough play there at second base for Taylor Marsh. So that'll bring up the pitcher, Abby Davis. With one out, runner on first. This one popped back up in play, and if we didn't have a roof over our heads here, I think that would have been pretty close to us here in the press box. Or the press dungeon, I don't know what they would exactly refer to this as. Solid cement room. A press bomb shelter, perhaps. This one hit hard. Into right field and able to make the play. That was Sanderson in right field. So now two down, runners on, runner in first. Now we'll face Jenna Moore. And this is low. That 
one taken for a strike, snap throw down to first. And safe on the play. That one grounded short. Oh, and through the shortstop, bobbled by center field, but able to keep it in front of her. And we'll have runners at first and second. So two down, top of the, or bottom of the first inning. That'll bring up Alexis Cordero. This one's popped up. Let's see if there's any room in foul territory. Going over to make the play for the Big Reds. And that will do it for the bottom of the first inning. Great play. And that will do it for the bottom of the first. We'll be back for the top of the second in just a moment here on CPHS 6. And we're back for the top of the second inning. And the Big Red will lead to the zero over the Marysville Vikings. Bring up to the plate Taylor Marsh. Second baseman for the Big Reds. And that one misses high and outside. That one strike right down the middle. This one popped up and once again not sure if there's going to be room and that will fall right into the dugout. It's like no one was there. So even staff in the dugout couldn't make a play on that foul ball. So Marsh will step back in, 2-2 two, two the count. Catcher appears to be setting up in the outside corner. Once again fouled off, keeps it 2-2. Two, two. Oh, it lands, now, now setting up on the inside corner, really trying to direct her pitches and play it a short. Play over to first in time. That is Bennett at shortstop. It's a nice play out of the shortstop, Bennett. That one taken for strike one. This is Ashley Gamble at the plate. Ground ball to short once again. Oh, bobbled it. Now it's going to be a close play at first, but still got her. And that's two down now. That'll bring up Sierra White, first baseman. Made the play in foul territory in the last half inning. Nice catch. This one off the end of the bat, and it's going to be a tough play. Second baseman couldn't handle it, and we'll have an infield single. Zuck at second base. That'll bring up right fielder Sanderson. First pitch taken for a ball. That 
That one taken for a strike looking. Down the dirt, taken for a ball. A pitch from Davis. Ground ball right back to her. Had trouble fielding it. Now we'll hold on to it and try to get the runner at second. Bobbled that ball. And the Big Reds stay alive. As Sanderson re re reaches base. Back to the top of the order with Cates. Runners on first and second, two outs. Or one out, excuse me. Runners are off on the pitch. They take second and third. So in the infield, they're going to try to check the runner at, at third. And then nice bunt down here, no play. And then safe the call as one run scores. And then able to advance to second. So now runners at second and third. The Reds now lead three to nothing. Kill loss is up. Oh, misses outside. Davis seems like she has a lot of movement to some of her pitches. And we've seen the catcher really set up all over the place, trying to paint the corner. Nice pitch there, swing, strike. We see runner on third. Also a runner on second. That one outside. I'm gonna try where the catcher wanted it though, and hitting her spots. That one inside ripped down the first baseline, but foul. And we see Sanderson there on third base. This one popped up in the infield. This one's gonna get down. This is gonna score one run, maybe more. And one run on the board. Advancing to third is Kate. And Kaibos with an RBI single. Really no play for Marysville there. That one just died right in the middle of the infield. Now Tuffin, first pitch swinging, ground to short. Player to first in time. And that will do it for the top of the second inning. Big Reds extend their lead by two. Now up four to nothing. We're back with the bottom of the second in just a moment here on CPHS 6. All right, back with the bottom of the second inning. Again, the Big Red's up to a 4 nothing lead. So now they have the shortstop Bennett stepping in. One pitch, though, and we'll have time call that at the plate. A little meeting on the mound. As Kester comes out to talk to Gamble. Again, Carrie Gamble on the mound. Also in the lineup, Ashley Gamble. Not to get them confused. And one again, this is high. 2-0.
This one off the handle and making a really nice play at third base. Coming over to make the play. That's Kaibas over at third. Tough play in foul territory. She had to get a break on that as soon as it was hit. Right off the handle for, for the Vikings. Now bring Lance into the box. Swing and miss there. Now the count 0-2, got to protect. Only one down. Pitch from Gamble. Tried to paint the outside corner. Looked pretty close. Make that two and two. That one misses outside. Make it full. That should be... I guess that was ball four. I thought, thought that made it a full count. And we'll have a courtesy runner. Kirsten Rivard will run. And we have to wait for the umpire now as he now puts on his mask. So Kayla Roberg now stepping in. Snap throw to first. Back in time. That pitch taken for ball one. Excuse me, that's Zuck at the plate. Roberge on deck. That one again misses. One out, runner at first. And once again, struggling to throw strikes. Although that's tough to say. Got ahead of the last batter, 2-0. Only to fall behind and eventually lose that one to a walk. Still early on, pitchers trying to get, get in the groove. Tough play at third, and that's going to be a pass ball out of play, so runners will advance an extra base. Tough play there, a little indecision as to who is going to field that. Now we'll have runners at second and third. Only one down, and Gamble finds runners on second and third. And Kayla Roberge steps in. Taken for strike one. Good way to start off the at-bat. Only one out, so any... Even a ground out. Or fly out to the outfield should score a run. I'm sure Gamble would love to see a strikeout right here. Now ahead 0-2. Swing and a miss, strike three. And then a pickoff. And now it's going to be a play at the plate. That throw is high. So one run will score. And runner will advance to third. So... Vikings first time on the board. Make it makes it four to one. Yeah. 
They'll bring up Taylor Vogt on top of the order for the Vikings. And I thought the Big Reds caught a break there. Got Marysville caught in a rundown, but then the throw home just too high. Catcher not able to make the play on it. And this one popped up in the infield and able to make the play on it. And that will do it for the top of the second inning. We'll be back with the bottom of the second in just a moment here on CPHS 6. And back with the top of the third. I believe I had a little bit of a slip up. A nice diving play at first base. That's more. Takes a hit away from Kester. And that'll bring Carrie Gamble up to the plate. I believe I made an air signing off the last inning. And a little confusing because the Vikings are the home team even though we are here at Port Huron High. So it is the top of the third inning. So the pitcher on pitcher matchup here. Gamble against Davis and taking that one all the way. That was a good pitch. Now behind one and two. That one misses high. Had a pitch to waste. Evens it up at two and two. One down. Again, the Big Red's up four to one in this one. Good job fighting back. Brings the count full. Now the payoff pitch. Right down the middle. Had fouled it off. Thought it was going to be a foul anyway. A lot of spin off that bat. And just hooked into shallow right field. And a one out hit for Gamble. Now bring up Taylor Marsh. Shows bunt, pulls it back. Taken for a strike though. Gets a sign from the manager. And now awaits the 0 1 pitch. That one taken for a ball, 1 and 1. That one misses, 2 and 1. hit hard to short. It's going to be a tough play and she's just going to have to eat that ball. Good job keeping it from rolling into the outfield and base hit for Taylor Marsh. Nice stop at short by Bennett. Now we have the other gamble, Ashley Gamble, stepping in. One out, runners on first and second. And this one will get through the middle. There should be one run. Throw off, the throw from center will be cut off by the pitcher. And extending the lead, five to one. As Ashley Gamble with the RBI hit. First pitch taken for a strike. on Sierra White. That one way outside. That one missed way outside for Davis, and I don't think she's getting the movement on her pitches that she's expecting. Kind of a hard time adjusting that, that one that 
missed way out. It looked like a slider that she wanted to cut back in. But it just didn't cut. This one popped up into foul territory. Back in the bleachers bouncing around. It's always a game of pinball once it starts knocking around in those bleachers. So still only one out. One out. Big Red's still threatening here. White hard hit ball to short. Force out play at third. Heads up play by Bennett to take the easy out and get the lead runner. Now two down. So the real dad is a fielder's choice. I'll bring up right fielder Katie Sanderson. This one hit hard to first. We have to outrun Sanderson, and second baseman does a good job covering first. Help her first baseman out. And that will do it for the top of the third inning. We'll be back with the bottom of the third in just a moment here on CPHS 6. Okay, now back with the bottom of the third inning of tonight's game. And yeah, the Big Red's up 5-1 to one in this one. Kerry Gamble on the mound. And Morgan Bucko at the plate. Third baseman for the Vikings and... Not really relevant to this game, but this was this is the second game of a doubleheader and cranked a home run back in game number one, so definitely has a lot of power. Wasn't one just barely over the fence, it was as soon as it came off the bat. And I think the Big Reds still have that one fresh in their memory. Don't need much of a scouting report there. Happened not that long ago. That one misses, though. Works a walk. Good job not forcing anything. That'll bring up Abby Davis. Number three hitter in this lineup. That one misses high. So Davis ahead in the count, 1-0. Bucko on first, ground ball to short. Gonna be a tough play, barehanded it and still got the out at first, bobbled it originally. And Kate's able to recover. And that's an impressive play. Regardless, there was going to be no shot at the double play there with the ball hit that deep in softball. That's just not a play you're ever going to turn. But so able to re recover from that bobble and still get the out at first. Great play. So Bucko does advance to second, though. That brings up more. This one hit high in the air. Had a lot of loft into it. Connected on it pretty well. Got a little loft and just barely foul. As we see the left fielder actually walk around the fence to, or past the fence at least. It rolled past it anyway. Wouldn't have carried the fence, but just foul anyway. Showing some pop in that bat. And definitely got under it, too. Wasting a lot of power there. Big swing there, though. Strike two. That one inside. Really leaning over that plate a little bit. Oh, Looks like he came pretty close to brushing her back on her helmet. Didn't even flinch, though. Ground ball, and this will get through. 
This could score a run and now bounced off the left fielder. This should score one. And forced to hold at first is Moore. But she'll have an RBI single. Score now five to two. That'll bring up Cordero. Still only one down. Bottom of the third inning. Popped up to the pitcher. Now could a double play in her hands. And out on the play. Great play by Kerry Gamble. Not only to catch that ball. A lot of spin, but... Uh, a heads up play to go over to first and get the double play. So that does it for the bottom of the third. We'll be back with the top of the fourth in just a moment here on CPHS 6. All right, back with the top of the fourth inning. And we start off with a bunt, and that one goes foul. Kate's up to bat for the Big Reds. This one popped up, and I think that's exactly what she was planning, actually. Saw the second baseman coming in and kind of took more of a stab at that one and able to launch that one over the second baseman. <laughs> so now Kate's reach reaches with no outs. It's going to give a shot to Kaiba's. This one's popped up, and we have three girls all running towards it, and it will fall in for a base hit. Kind of landed in no man's land out there. Tough play for anyone. And good job, Kate, staying at least halfway through. Let's see if that one would be caught. And after it did fall in, actually was able to reach second safely. So now runners at first and second with Tuffin up to the plate. This one hit right back at the pitcher, able to knock it down, but she's gonna have a tough play. So Abby Davis knocks it down. But Tuffin is able to reach, and now the bases are loaded with no outs. And we'll have a timeout called on the mound. So obviously got to talk strategy here, no one out. Bases loaded. Good news for the Vikings, that means there's a force out at any base, so if they can force an infield hit, they'll come home with it. But still got a lot to work. Still got a lot of work to get out of this jam. And this might be partly to check on Davis. I don't know where exactly she was hit by that ground, grounder. If she got her glove up, she seems to be all right, not laboring at all. But sometimes you gotta be careful as coaches, especially with adrenaline going, you can take kind of a more of a hit than you realize. But she seems to be all right. Didn't say anything, otherwise she probably would've got a couple practice throws. Now squeeze play and a stole home. Great run, <laughs> great job running on the bases is Cates. Brianna Cates now will wipe off home plate and shove all that dust up in the air for all the infielders and base runners. Make it nice and pleasant for everyone on the field. So now runners at first and second. Other runners did not move on the play. Kate's the only one advancing. And this ground ball hit to third and gonna be a force out at third. Make that one down, so that will go down as a fielder's choice. And 
was Kate Coaster, as we see her there on first base. That'll bring up the pitcher, Kerry Gamble. So one out now. It is six to two. Top of the fourth inning, only one down. Runners on first and second as they square off with Abby Davis. This one hit hard once again at Davis. Got a glove on it, but unable to field it. Now the center fielder bobbles it. One run will score. The throw to third now trying to take second and able to do so is Gamble. So make that 7-2. Heads up base running by Gamble to take second there. Now starting to stretch the lead out. So bring Marsh up to the plate. Another tough play hit right back at her, Abby Davis. And that's a tough play in baseball, even tougher in softball. Shorter distance and almost no time to react. So a tough break for the Vikings. That one misses for a ball. Marsh is at the plate with Ashley Gamble on deck. Swing and a miss there. Still alive though. Full count. We'll see what she gets to hit here. Checks the runner, tries to check the runner and she will reach base. Tough decision for Bucko over there at third. Runner right behind her and she knew if she probably threw that one to first, another runner would score. So end up holding on, holding on to it. And Marsh able to reach. Now we have Ashley Gamble with the bases loaded. Still only one out. That one misses outside. Coaches for Port here on high saying got a score and a base hit. Said all of them. It's a pretty big, pretty good, pretty big thing to hear from your coach. Actually scoring all the way from first on a base hit. That's going to be simply grounded to the pitcher, not off on the pitch though, on thir third base. Didn't get a good break on that ball. So they take the easy out at home. Will be a fielder's choice. Bases will still be loaded. But now with two outs. And now to score a run, we're gonna have to have a base hit from Sierra White. This one grounded to second. Play over to first in time, and that will do it for the top of the fourth. Big Red's up 7-2. to two. We'll be back with the bottom of the fourth in just a moment here on CPHS 6. Back with the bottom of the fourth, and we started off with a strike. Against the shortstop, Bennett. Great defensive shortstop, by the way. So you make a couple plays, a nice play in the stands by the Port Huron High fan over there. Actually catching that one barehanded. Went all in on that catch and now celebrating a little bit. Rightfully so. Hopefully those hands don't sting in the morning. And once again, off in foul territory. So 
So Kerry Gamble still doing a good job on the mound. And she faces Bennett. Got two strikes on her now. And once again, fouled off. And oh, off the bounce. And, and actually hit one of the fans in the nose off the bounce. Opposite of the other situation. I thought we were going to have another snag. And uh, Coach waves to play on. Or I think she... Might have a little bit of a bloody nose there. Always in foul ball territory when you're here at the stadium. That one just took an awkward bounce and typically you see him coming, but that one not really, didn't expect it. Bounced it right off the cement, took an awkward bounce and right at her, so. Back on the field, we're playing, and it's coming right by the same thing. And this time, Coach is playing a little defense over there against protecting some of his fans, trying to show some loyalty to his supporters. Helping his team on defense. <laughs> Fortunately, we can't count that as an out, Coach. A little too far in foul territory, not exactly on the roster. So meanwhile, Bennett's still staying alive, and this one finally going to stay fair. A shot out to left field, put away by Jamie Tuffin. So one out for a long at bat by Bennett. Bring up Emma Lance. Ellen misses for a ball. Again, once again, we'll clarify this bottom of the fourth inning, but the, actually the Vikings are the home team, even though we are at Port Huron High School. This is a makeup game for a double header. So the Vikings are the home team. We'll have last at bats. Today, should it come down to that? So just trying to keep things confusing on us. And once again, the Vikings working the count now. Two good at bats in a row. That one taken for a strike though. Ground ball on foul territory. So the count is full. On Lance. This one popped up and landing just in front of us in the press box. Again, protected by the press box storm shelter that is up here. I have to hit it pretty hard to take a swing at us. This one fouled back, but apparently they're trying now. As, uh, there I am, wave. Wave to the camera. Apparently I have to speak a little quieter. Calling them out, and now they're swinging for me. But two great at bats in a row. First Bennett, now Lance, keeping the alive foul balls, and this one hit hard in the center. Going back to make a play, and nice play out in center field. So Monica Zuck will now step in. This one's pop sky high. Coming in is right fielder, 
I believe that's Sanderson. And we'll do it for out number three. And they go down one, two, three, although a couple tough at bats, and that does it for the bottom of the fourth. We'll be back with the top of the fifth in just a moment here on CPHS 6. Back now for the top of the fifth inning. Big Red still lead in this one, seven to two. As, Senders, as Sanderson steps in, gets down a bunt, and perfect position. But nice play by the Vikings to beat that one out. Good job coming in fielding it. Jenna Moore and second baseman slide it over. Monica Zuck covering first. Because really Sanderson put that pretty much right where you want to put it. Especially with a third baseman playing in all night. And once again, tried the drag bunt there. We're back to the top of the order with Cates. That one again foul. I have to start swinging now. Down 0-2. Infield still playing in. A stab at that one. Still two strikes. Cates gets this one. It's going to be short. Play over and got a great jump. And now that is a pass ball will stay in the stadium so but still able to advance as Kate tough play for the shortstop Bennett Lindsay Kaibas will step in This one hit hard, and it will drop in right field. Outfielder goes down on the play. Let's see if we're, and one run will come in and score as Kate scores from second. No Kaibos with an RBI single. And now we'll bring up Jamie Tuffin. So now eight to two. And this one check swing, but still got a ton of distance, and it will split the outfielders. This will be extra bases. She might go for three. One run should score. Waving around and cut off by the pitcher after they were coming home with that one, but then overthrow good. One run does score. Tuffin was going to stop at second. Then saw the throw home. Tried to make it to third. Was cut off by the pitcher, but still able to make it into third. Yeah, give a heads up play to left fielder Moore for Marysville backing up the third baseman. So only one down. And ground ball to short and that will score another run bobbled by the shortstop. And Bennett, we mentioned earlier, it's game game two of a doubleheader. And we've seen some great shortstop plays from Bennett. But unfortunately not able to field that one. Now it's 10-2. Kester at first, and we have Kerry Gamble at first. Right 
So the pitcher Gamble at the plate. A check swing and it ends up being almost a perfect bunt and pounded that one right into the ground and the ground pretty much absorbed every bit of force it had and it trickled along the first baseline. But how it will show up on the score sheet as an infield single. And we'll bring up Taylor Marsh. Point here on high still threatening. Misses outside to Marsh. On a rough night on the mound for Abby Davis for the Vikings. That one fielded right back to her. She'll have the easy out at first. And now we'll have two down as the runners advance to second and third. And I have to say this for Davis. I think she's just encountered a, a big red team that's swinging the bat really well right now. So now face Ashley Gamble. Runners on second and third. Now two outs. Ground ball to short. Play over to first in time. And that does it for the top of the fifth inning. Ten to two. We'll be back with the bottom of the fifth. Just a moment here on CPHS 6. So Kayla Gamble will take the mound for the Big Reds here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Stay on the mound, I should say. Big Reds up 10-2. That's now stepping in Kayla Roberg. And this could be the last at-bats for the Vikings. Could be subject to a mercy rule. If they do not score a run, Big Reds are up 8 currently. 10-2. And... Play easily made at shortstop by Cates. So this game could be ending early due to a mercy. Now Taylor Volpe is up to the plate. She tries to bunt that one foul. So this is the top of the order. So the Vikings are going to have a good shot to try and stay in this one. They just need to score one run to stay out of the mercy. And Carrie Gamble's trying to do everything she can to keep it that way. Keep the score as it is. Volt, though, in the top of the order. And hard hit ball right up the middle, and hopefully nice field on the center field. They're able to pick it up cleanly. That's Delaney Hurley in center. And important that that ball does not get behind you. And that will bring up the very powerful Morgan Bucko, who in game one of the doubleheader, had a two-run homer. So Port here and High will take a second as they talk about how they want to pitch to her. One down, runner on first. Again, just cranked a home run in the first game of this doubleheader. This one on the ground, though, but it will get through, and we'll move the runners. Now we'll have runners on the corners as Bucko comes through with a key base hit. So runners at the corners, Big Reds are gonna have to try to check the runner at third. Obviously don't be surprised if the runner from first is off on the pitch. And Davis trying to help her own cause as a pitcher. This time with a bat. 
First pitch swing and popped up in the infield, and that's about the last thing you, you want to happen. No runners can advance. So the Big Reds still got a great shot and down to one out to put this one away. So great pitch by Gamble, able to get Davis to pop out. That's the number four hitter though, Moore, and got underneath this one, but I think she's gonna have room, and she does. So Kate's able to make the play, and that'll do it for tonight's game. The Port Huron High Big Reds win 10 to two over the Marysville Vikings. We'd like to thank you all for joining us here on CPHS 6. I'm Carl Staffhorse. Good night. Okay, so a little confusion at the end of the last half inning. We thought we had a mercy rule win for the Big Reds, but fields are, teams are back on the field. Gonna play this one out. Don't know what the decision was there. I thought it was with the mercy rule was eight runs after five innings, which Big Reds have. But we'll start the top of the sixth inning. And base hit through the middle. Actually, nice play. Bennett at short. So one down here, top of the sixth inning. Swing and a miss there. Sanderson now at the plate. Back to the top of the order after this. That one misses outside. One and one. Once again misses outside. Davis still on the mound for the Vikings. Yes, we have time. Call that home home plate. I think it was actually the offense that called that, but we'll have a meeting on the mound anyway. Well, they have a second. Coach talking to Sanderson. So, walks back in, two and one count. One out here, top of the sixth inning. Swing and a miss. Make that two and two. Good pitch from Davis. And we see the wind coming through from our center field camera. A lot of wind that these infielders and pitchers have had to deal with here tonight. There's a giant dust bowl out there. Still alive, 2-2, two -two after fouling that one off. Hard hit ball to second, fielded cleanly over the first in time. Nice play by Zuck. Now back to the top of the order with Cates. So two down, again, Portier on high with a 10 to two. That one's gonna roll foul. So Kate's now down 0-1. Off speed pitch there, well, he's already walking down the line. Every time you see that swing, especially from a left-handed batter, you always think of Ichiro Suzuki, and that one hit hard. Infield played in, didn't give, didn't give um, Zuck pretty much any response time on that. So Cates will reach on an infield single. 
I'll bring Cabas up. One taken for a strike on the outside corner. Whenever you see that swing from, you saw earlier from a lefty, a lot like Keiichi, you, you think of Ichiro Suzuki, who's pretty much already halfway down the base path as he's swinging. Able to beat out a lot of infield singles that way. Off on the pitch, straight steal. Perhaps a hit and run. And play over to first in time, so that will do it for the top of the sixth inning. We'll be back with the bottom of the sixth in just a moment here on CPHS 6. Back with the bottom of the sixth inning. Again, the Vikings, the home team tonight. First pitch swinging. And nice play charging the ball there. And right field, when we see the effects of the dust is Sanderson trying to get the dust out of her eyes after that one. I think she'll gladly retreat back to the outfield. Stay out of the dusty infield. And still able to make a play. And again, just... See all the dirt. Looks like a sandstorm from our center field camera. And the wind's starting to pick up and doesn't look like rain's all that far away. Gary Gamble still on the mound. Four port here on high. They lead ten to two. That one misses high. That's Brooke Bennett at the plate. Again, high. Lance is on deck. One misses. And ball four. Bennett able to work a walk. Now we'll have a pinch hitter, I believe. Kirsten Rivard. Well, I think that was a last minute switch because I swear I saw Lance warming up outside the dugout. So a runner on first. One down here. Bottom of the sixth inning. We well, started to explain it earlier, but the Vikings are actually the home team tonight, despite being at Port Huron High School. This is a makeup of a rain delay game, or a game called off by rain earlier in the year. So, Vikings get last bats. That one just misses inside, and a little debate of whether that was ball four, but eventually she takes her base. And that will bring up Zuck. Second baseman also. The person that's shown some good glove work at second base today. That one misses high. So I'm going to have a little bit of a command issue for Carrie Gable. Gamble, excuse me. One misses high again. So 
So trouble throwing the ball over the plate right now. That one taken for a strike. To the runners and a third straight walk. Big Red starting to get into some trouble. So Kayla Roberg will step in. Bases loaded, one down, top of the sixth inning. That first pitch taken for a strike. And we see the runner on third. That's Bennett. Ground ball foul. Ground ball to the shortstop. Going to be one out at first. One run will score. So now it's 10-3. As the Vikings are able to drive in a run there. Taylor Vope will now step in. This top of the order for the Vikings. Runners on second and third. First pitch ball once again from Gamble. Gamble again really pitched a great game. Started to have control issues in this inning. Fielded that ball great though off the glove and able to complete the play, throw to first, and that will end the inning. That will do it for the bottom of the sixth. We'll be back with the top of the seventh in just a moment here on CPHS 6. And back with the top, back with the top of the seventh inning, and and one pitch, one out. As Jamie Tuffin dry, grounds out. That one misses outside. Score ten to three in this one. As Kester's up to the plate, Abby Davis still on the mound for the Vikings. Uh, time called at home plate. As the catcher will talk to Davis. Lance behind the plate. Actually, I believe Kirsten Rivard, who subbed in earlier, she's now the catcher. That long fly out to center field is out number two. And now Carrie Gamble will step in. Again, top of the seventh inning. Vikings with last at bats. They are the home team officially. That one fouled, and it will bounce off the dugout. No one there to make a play. No room to make a play, even. This one hit, and this will fall in for a hit. Bobbled by the right fielder, just over the head of the second baseman. And 
I'll bring up Taylor Marsh. And that is Carrie Gamble's fourth hit on five attempts tonight. So impressive outing for the pitcher. Both with a bat in her hand and doing well on the mound tonight as well. A rough ending in the last inning with walks, but pitched a good game thus far. And now add a stolen base to that as she'll steal second on the pass ball. That one missed way high. Will be a wild pitch as I'm being corrected. That is the correct term. Oh, line shot right back to the pitcher, able to deflect it and able to complete it is Zuck at second base. That does it for the top of the seventh. Big Red still up, 10 to three. Last at bats, bottom of the seventh coming up next here on CPHS 6. Okay, back for the bottom of the seventh inning and last at bats for the home team, the Marysville Vikings. Although we're at Port Huron High. They're the home team tonight, first pitch misses. And starting off is Morgan Bucko. Terry Gamble still going strong on the mound. As mentioned, last half inning having a great offensive game as well. So really an all-around great day in the score sheet. That one misses high. Struggling with her command a little bit late. Doing a pretty impressive job in keeping the Vikings only held at three runs and coming over to make the play in right field. And Sanderson. So now we'll have the pitcher once again, Abby Davis. One down here in the bottom of the seventh. One hit right back up the middle and fielded by the second baseman for out number two. That's Taylor Marsh. Talked about the defense of a couple Marysville players. A good defensive game by both Cates and um, Marsh up the middle today. So the Big Red's holding their own defensively. So two down, again score 10 to three, bottom of the seventh inning. And more up to the plate for Marysville. Swing and a miss there. Nice pitch from Gamble as she's trying to end this game strong. It's facing the number four hitter for the Vikings. This one popped up. Should be an easy play for the right fielder and caught for the out. Once again by Sanderson. Seeing a lot of action in right field tonight and that will do it for tonight's game. Final score, Port Huron High Big Reds 10, Marysville Vikings 3. I'd like to thank you all for joining us here on CPHS 6. I'm Carl Staffhorse. Good night.